So let me ask you a question. Have you ever driven a car? Have you ever flown on an airplane? Have you ever used a sidewalk? Have you ever drank out of the faucet or the tap in your house? To answer the yes to any of those questions, then a civil engineer was involved with the design, construction, and maintenance of that infrastructure. Hey, my name is Manuel Tom. Welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about what a civil engineering does and what the civil engineering industry is all about. It's a topic that's near and dear to my heart as I'm currently in the process of becoming a licensed engineer here in Canada. Now, whether someone is watching this video because they're curious to see what a civil engineering does or you're in the process of becoming a civil engineer, I thought this video would be insightful to sort of expand on what this industry is and how many sub-disciplines are involved in civil engineering. So what exactly is a civil engineer? And the best way to describe that is someone who is responsible for the design, construction, and maintenance of infrastructure and natural environments. The best way to really go in depth into civil engineering is actually going back in time and seeing where civil engineering all proceeded from. So civil engineering has been a part of human life since almost human existence in its entirety. When it really bloomed and blossomed off into its own industry is when nomadic culture centered around a community-based living. And this dates back to 4,000 BC when the first communities and civilizations were set up in Egypt and Mesopotamia. The earliest works of a civil engineer are the very famous pyramids in Giza, as well as just simple water routing for you know farming, as well as safe drinking water. Now, over the years since more research has been put into the subject, mathematical breakthroughs, as well as globalization, civil engineering has actually blossomed off into sub-disciplines and specializations within these sub-disciplines are now required to keep a functional community as well as a country. I'll be going over some of these sub-disciplines in this video and sort of just scratching the surface for those that are curious to know more about them. Also guys, if you find these videos insightful, educational, or just entertaining, please consider subscribing to my channel. The views and the likes that you guys have given me on my channel have propelled it to where it is today and I appreciate all the support from everybody. So most people when they think of civil engineering, the first thing that comes to their minds are bridges, structures, buildings, and just large pieces of man-made infrastructure. And technically you guys are correct. Now a civil engineer's duty in structural engineering is to make sure structure that they're building provides its usefulness to its intended users and stakeholders, but most importantly is to make sure that it is safe. This means making sure that the structure will be safe from natural disasters such as earthquakes or other environmental conditions like flooding and or fires and also to ensure that it meets code that is regulated by both the municipal provincial and federal jurisdictions of the respective countries so some examples of what a civil engineer would do in the structural sub-discipline is working with architects to design buildings and facilities designing bridges tunnels and culverts evaluating how natural phenomena like wind snow and earthquakes affect structures and supervising the construction of these structures such as schools buildings hospitals, and essentially any man-made structure. So what's often overlooked by everyone are roads, highways, and other transportation facilities. And all of these fall under the sub-discipline of transportation engineering. Transportation engineering is the sub-discipline that's involved with the planning, modeling, design, and construction of these transportation facilities. Also, as well as the maintenance and making sure that they meet the user demands and make sure the capacities are functional to society. Anything that involves the movement of goods or people falls under the sub-discipline of transportation engineering. And some of the examples of this are highways and roadways, oil pipelines, railways, public transportation systems, traffic control systems such as roundabouts and traffic signals, and space transportation systems such as highways. Some of the responsibilities of a transportation engineer are drafting and designing construction plans for new transportation facilities, investigating traffic problems and identifying solutions, modeling transportation systems and assessing their impacts, and inspecting completed work to make sure everything is up to standard and code. So a great example of what something a transportation engineering would do was something that we take for granted every day, and those are traffic signals. So the green, yellow, and red lights when we come to an intersection. Now, some people would believe that these are timed and they're fixed, and that is true. There are some. Now, a transportation engineer's job is to make sure that there isn't too much queuing or delay on each approach. So sometimes these traffic signals and the timings are modified to meet the demand of the number of vehicles that are approaching that intersection. So sometimes you might be at an intersection and you realize that one of the legs, there's no cars, and you'll notice that your traffic signal will switch from a red to green. That's because some of these are automated and programmed by engineers to make sure that everything flows smoothly. Okay, so let me ask you a question. When you think of a great place to live, what are the first things you need to satisfy in your checklist? How big your house is, 
how close you are to work, how close you are to the store, whether or not you have a public transportation system nearby. But let me ask you another question. Have you ever considered whether or not the water you're drinking is clean? Right? Something we take for granted. And you can thank a water and wastewater engineer for making sure that your water is clean. And that leads to our third discipline, water and wastewater engineering. Water and wastewater engineers oversee the design and maintenance of any facility that pertains to transportation of clean drinking water, stormwater, and wastewater. These engineers also model pipelines and put an infrastructure for the transportation of all three things. So make sure that clean water is distributed and transported to your house in an effective manner and to make sure sewage is taken from your house to a water and wastewater cleaning facility. Now some of the other responsibilities of a water and wastewater engineer include designing water distribution systems for clean drinking water, designing and selecting proper equipment to clean sewage, designing pumps and pumping stations for transporting sewage to waste treatment centers, and analyzing water and flood patterns to ensure that your community doesn't get flooded during a rain event. So next time you turn on the tap and you see clean drinking water, make sure you thank a water and wastewater engineer for that. One of the biggest paradigm shifts in the last 50 years is the focus on global warming and environmental sustainability. And this is where environmental engineers come into effect. In order to live in a healthy community, we have to ensure that the air that we breathe is clean and the area that we live in is also clean and well kept and free from pollution. An environmental engineer's primary responsibilities is to deal with the mitigation of natural and man-made pollution, such as acid rain, automobile emissions, as well as finding ways to slow down or completely eliminate ozone depletion. As the responsibilities suggest, these environmental engineers often work with other disciplines of engineering and not just other disciplines of civil engineering. So I'm talking about working with automakers and their mechanical engineers and also working with chemical engineers. Now, some of the other responsibilities of an environmental engineer are preparing and reviewing investigation reports, analyzing data and doing quality control checks, inspection of industrial and municipal facilities, and advising corporations and governments about potential hazards and procedures to deal with contaminated sites. Now, I hope I did a good job of just scratching the surface of what a civil engineer and some of what its disciplines do. Uh, I hope to make more content about engineering in the future, and I really hope that you enjoyed this content. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comment box down below, and I'll try and get back to you as soon as possible. But until next time, peace.